One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, just going over, I mean, I just made a list. I, I, I started a little bit early, guys, uh, for the people just joining us because I just pressed play. But these are going to be the ones I'm, I'm watching for tomorrow uh, because we actually have some kind of um, activity going on. Uh, but I was, yeah, I was just saying, dude, like if, if we get a gapper on UONE, there will definitely be a play long and short tomorrow. Uh, the higher, the higher we gap, the better for the short, the, you know, the, you know, if we open anywhere like sub 13, that's going to be good for the long, um, playing off these, this 11 or 1150 line, wherever this bottoms out, ideally this doesn't just like, if this thing fades off to nine, then I mean that I won't be shocked. Uh, you know, I just, you know, it'll just be ho-hum just that's this kind of market but if we open up that'll be pretty great that'll be a that'll be kind of a slap in the face to not not shorts because like like i'm not trying to slap shorts in the face but i'm trying to like I, I think it'll give a nice slap to the shorts who just abandon risk risk management because this is their market right so yeah i mean this is this is going to be my top watch for tomorrow definitely this uone play ideally we gap up higher than this if we open here, it's going to be a fucking battle. If we open around here, um, it, then it's going to be a battle. It probably washes, and then it probably gets bought up, and it's going to be wherever the bottom of the wash is, whether it's 9, 950, 10. It probably won't be this low. Well, it depends where it opens. Like, if it opens 10, it can easily get this low. Let's say it opened here at 1086, right here. Um, you know, you know, wherever the bottom of the wash is, it's going to then spike. It's going to be pretty range-bound and... Uh, probably the shorts win that battle. I mean, this is so much speculation, but um, I think, you know, in order for the longs to win the battle, then shorts need to be kind of put on their ass a little bit. So I, um, we'll see where this opens, but this is my number one watch going into tomorrow. Anyway, welcome to the webinar. Um, we kind of already started, but uh, if this is your first webinar, welcome. We're going to start now. Uh, the, the theme of today's webinar, and we're going to have a guest come on later. Um, we're gonna have a guest come on later for, for this one. I don't know. I don't know if he's here. Oh, he is here. Um, and then, and then I'll bring him on, uh, after, um, and we're going to talk about, um, being mindful while you're trading. So that'll be pretty fun. Anyway. So anyway, this is, this is like, it, it's just, it, it's a convenient time because I wanted to do the, like one, I, 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 I somewhat touched upon this kind of material when i did my live webinar in philly or it wasn't a webinar i guess a live seminar in philly and that was how to uh how to view stocks uh through the eyes of an experienced trader like how to view price action how to how to come into the market with the eyes of an experienced trader and i touched on a lot of stuff in that in that uh presentation about just being cool calm and collected and this, this is really going to go to the heart of that. And like, the thing is you can be a trader. And I know some traders that don't have any hair anymore that just that, I mean, they're all shorts, of course, the, the ones that just hold, you know, swing shorts and like they make big money, but the amount of unrealized I've seen them sit through and the amount of just worrisome, right? You can be that kind of trader and you don't have to be a swing short to, to, to have that kind of fear and worry, but just on a day-to-day -day basis, I, we'll see if it's sustainable or not. Like we'll see. I mean, I've, I, I mean, a few, few can do it, but I'm guessing not everybody. Yeah. It's um, yeah. Like the, the Herald meme. So yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the staying relaxed, composed and mindful and its benefits long-term to just being a trader and like staying happy while, while trading and how that, how you want to, you want to have green trades to keep you happy. Um, but then that puts a dependent on, you, you know, like it puts a dependent on your relaxation. Like you can't be relaxed unless you perform at a super high level. 
And that in essence makes it like really difficult to perform at such high level. So trading is one of those catch 22s where you kind of need to have, and this is why I say like, you have to stick with it. You have to trade a small enough amount of size to last long enough to, um, to get to become this relaxed and composed and then things start to click. And that's kind of the story of trading. It's this catch 22 where you need to have the car to go to work, right? You need to have this mindset to be successful, but in order to get this mindset, you have to have experience, right? And, you know, experience, winning, experience, losing, and then slowly by slowly you chip away at those losses and, and all of, you don't, you can't ever pinpoint a day where it clicked, but when it started to click is when you started to become relaxed, composed, and just mindful of who you are as a trader, what's going on, um, you know, just where you fit. So we're going to be talking about that. I just spilled that. It's probably on camera all over my lap. Anyway, let's get started or let's continue. Anyway, um, so yeah, if, if this is your first webinar, uh, this is the, the table of contents I normally go through. I go over the market sentiment week to week. Probably be better if I did that every two weeks, but I, you know, it's, it's something I like to keep track of. Uh, then we'll go over all the runners for the week that you guys want me to go over. We'll go over, you know, good risk levels, good targets, good key levels on the chart that really made a difference, like 620 on Mosey today. We'll go over possible entries and exit areas uh, for, you know, different kind of theses. And then we'll get into the heart of the webinar and I'll bring the guest on and we'll have a good time. And this is a Q&A webinar. So if you ever have any questions throughout the webinar, just put them in the chat. Uh, the chat's free reign. You don't have to like, it's not going to be monitored or anything, but if you have a question, I'll try to get to it. And anyway, yeah, let's keep, let's get going. Anyway, so last week, right, we were looking at the queues and the spy and we were, I mean, we just had like two straight weeks of shit, shit market on, on the, in the overall market where we just saw that kind of decay, shit. where we saw that kind of decay, where, let's see here. You know, just straight like two weeks of just crap. Actually, I mean, really, it's three because I mean, this was like, I mean, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So this is two weeks, and that's another two weeks. So really, we've had like two weeks of stall and like, you know, one to two weeks of tank. So like, it's there's been a really crappy, just like, no confidence to buy up here, and then we tank. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. So um, this is what we were we were coming into a week ago, we were like right here at, at the shits, right? We were right down here in the shits. And so um, this is where that, you know, that fe that fear, that weakness, all of those worries about inflation and shit kind of started to hit the fan. Maybe we are at an all time hop. Maybe we are at an all time top. Like maybe I don't want to be long here. And then, so we see that fear drops. And so what I thought that the market needed was it needed a pull to the sub 300. Um, and basically the market is in search of a support level, right? The market is in, in search of some level to where people will feel confident that uh, we, you know, that the floor is not going to be uh, pulled from under them. And like, I, I, I gave a hypothesis. I think that's 300. I mean, this, I'm, I was talking about a big pull. Um, like, I, I feel like that level is 300, like to get the pull, this would be pretty big. 310 would even be okay, but so, some kind of pull that we needed to show where the support is. And this is just where I guess I was hoping it was going to be somewhere in there. Cause then, then, you know, it, you know, we always see strong buys off lows. Right. And, and then the confidence would kind of be back. And so that's what I th felt like it needed. Um, but then we got this interesting thing this week, right? We got that Bitcoin kind of flash crash and, and, and this kind of taught me a little bit, uh, like I learned a lesson here about this kind of this Bitcoin crash here. And it, and I learned this lesson as I related to what happened when GME happened. Um, and what I started to notice is that the market um, likes the, the markets has these kinds of shifts in the market that are obviously driven from catalysts, but it's almost as if the market waits for these checkpoints to, to make a change. And I'll go over that later because it's, it's here at the end. 
Uh, but what we saw this week from that, this Bitcoin flash crash, right? We saw the strong positive. I mean, what we've seen in the last couple of days is a strong positive bounce. Now, we will see in the next coming days uh, if this, like, especially tomorrow, right? We've had, we had this big buy, buy the dip day, which is pretty bullish when you tank on a flash crash. But it's pretty bullish if it was actually something like bad news. The thing is, what you could attribute to this buy and then this just this continuation of the buy is the fact that Bitcoin should, you know, that it was an unsubstantiated drop. Like Bitcoin tanking should not tank the market, so it's unjustified. So this dip is unwarranted. So everything everybody buys it up, and so that could definitely explain this. Um, and this probably is what explains this rapid um, uh, this this bounce back. But now the question has to be. Are we, I mean, we were just down here a few days ago before the crash and, and we started to bounce. Like, was this a natural progression or were we going to go retest low? So we'll see, you know, really probably in tomorrow's gap, what happens. Like any, obviously barring any other news, we'll see if, if buyers are, are comfortable, like, you know, like going and testing higher than this, you know, in two straight days. If we go and test, if we have another strong green day up to 335 or if we gap down and maybe go test 320, right? We're really going to see in the next coming days whether this, um, the, the market basically said that, that we should not be tanking off Bitcoin. That's basically what I attribute to this bounce off. We should not be tanking just because Bitcoin tanks. And I got to say, I agree. But now the, the question goes back to the old question. We've answered that question. Now the new, the, the old question that we have to revisit is, uh, do we want to go and continue and go and test these levels? Or was this enough of a, of a card reveal, right? In essence, this was a big card reveal. Was this 320 the support that we were looking for or do we need to go and test it again? And so that's really uh, what's in the card. So of course, barring all news, I think that's what's in the position right now. Uh, that's what the market needs to find out next. And so we'll need to, like I said, we need to see if we maintain this 320 on, on the cues. and the, the same thing is on the SPY at 405. It's just a different level. Uh, but I also, but I ultimately think that we do need some consolidation. We need some proof of this because this was rather fast. This, this pullback was rather fast. And so like, you know, like I said, a couple of weeks ago when we kind of did the, or not, not when we did this kind of bounce or this kind of bounce, one of these, like this bounce here, I think, um, was a little kind of a wrap. Yeah. We had another kind of, you know, we tanked, but then rapid recovering up, up two days in a row, uh, just like around here when I said, uh, this is a little fast up. Um, if we continue up from here, I do think that then it, it'll be an unconfident, everyone will be unconfident, unconfident up here. Whereas if we just consolidate for, I don't know, just like a week, maybe even a week or two, and then build back up, it'll be a much stronger foundation. Similar to, I mean, you can just look at this in the Mosey chart. It's the same concept of all technical analysis is that, um, the market felt like, you know, this move was too fast. These moves are too fast. And so it needed to build a long foundation of consolidation before, before it could try and make its move up, right? This is basically the market saying this is, you know, this move up here, this is too fast for a secondary move, right? This is too fast. We had this big move here. Uh, and so this kind of pullback and then, you know, you go for another move. This long consolidation is the market trying to tell you that this wasn't long enough of a consolidation to prove that we're ready to hold six bucks, right? We need to really prove that we can hold six bucks. goes back to my very first webinar I ever did this, you know, volume consolidation to prove that we can hold on to a level and then, you know, to move on to that next level up. That's basically what this is in a nutshell. And that's why I avoided it because I was like, I'm not going to guess whether or not we're going to hold or not. That's, I mean, this could have just, tanked right i don't know but you know i wanted to see the proof and in this particular case we had a level in in question which really took the trade off the table for me after this because the not only did it need to consolidate but it needed to prove that it could hold six but also that it could get over 620 and that was the big thing here but essentially we see the same thing on the cues is that you know the the market likes to have these consolidation patterns now it's obviously more choppy right with with the overall market it's not as clean but the market likes to have these consolidation moments before they have significant moves up 
Uh, what's what's Pablo saying? Um, it's a breath of fresh air. This act, like it is definitely a UONE is definitely a breath of fresh air. We'll 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 see if that breath of fresh air gets stronger because you know last week or so we saw a breath of fresh air for lungs and it, you know that 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 fire got doused. So we're gonna see if that happens again. That's why one of you guys said I you know I can't wait to see how excited Austin is for this new warm action. I'm. I, I'm a little reserved on that. I'm like, well, I mean, let's see how tomorrow. Let's see if you let's see how UNE gaps before we start getting excited. Right. UNE can easily just gap down and open at nine tomorrow. And then it's just like so, <laughs> Oh god, nobody screenshot it. Well, I mean, I guess you guys on the replay are gonna be able to screenshot that. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.